Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about counting things fast. As a warm-up, consider this image of Lumos neurons. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, lots of them. This just takes too long. You need to do this automatically. What are your options? Well, typically people use cell counters to count cells or they stain structures in those cells, for example, the nucleus, and then use some simple image analysis on the fluorescence images to count cells. Both disturb the sample, both come with a price tag, and neither of them is available post hoc. To be sure, there are lots of applications where there are exactly the right tools for the job. No argument there, but let's see what AI and image processing can give you. The way to go there is to segment images and then to count objects. Image segmentation in this context means to draw onto images in different colors depending on structures. And counting objects then means to find contiguous regions that are colored in the same color and counting these objects. In the example below, you see number keys colored in red and letter keys colored in blue. And you see 20 red regions, 20 numbers, and 29 blue regions, 29 letter keys. Actually, this kind of works in this case. If you color all the cell bodies in blue, as in this image, and you count all the blue regions, then you get an approximate number of cells in your image. However, if you take the full picture into account, then you'll see where it gets difficult, exactly in those places where the cells run together, where it gets difficult to tell where one cell begins and one cell ends. Another approach is not to segment entire cells, but just substructures, as in this example, where we did something akin to AI-based staining of the nucleus. The nuclei can be detected in bright field images, and they can be counted afterwards. Unfortunately, that won't work for neurons here. At least I can't find a structure in a bright field image like that that would identify one and exactly one neuron. The technique we're going to use here is to teach a machine to put a red dot on each neuron where we think its center is. I'm using our Vader system for this job, and as you can see, teaching the machine is just a matter of pointing and clicking. To get good results, I only had to label the neurons in three images this way, and from the second image onward, all I really had to do was correct the few mistakes Vader was still making. And this is what the model's performance looks like on new data. Just visually, it should be pretty clear that Vader puts the dots exactly where they should be. And by counting dots, you count neurons. It would be very surprising if those numbers were off substantially. But we can do better than just eyeballing. To validate the results in this example, I counted the cells in three more images, this time without Vader's help. And then I compared the numbers, and I've got to say they're pretty close. I'm not really sure if they would be this close if I just counted the same cells twice. To get an idea of the spread, I did a small simulation where I repeatedly sampled the counts, my own and those that Vader did, on smaller cutouts of the images, 200 by 200 pixel each. And then I recombined those counts to counts for entire images. And I computed the relative differences. The distributions of these relative differences are nice and normal and tightly centered around their means between minus 1% and minus 3%. And that means that if your neurons behave like ours and your imaging is like ours and you put your dots where I did and train a model like I did, then you can expect this method to generate an undercounting of at most 4% and an overcounting of at most 10%. Okay. Getting here was a bit of work, but now I can do what it says in the title of this video. I can count neurons in a truckload of images at the click of a button. It only takes seconds to take an image and to analyze it, and I don't need to do anything to the cells like detach them or stain them. And the best part? It works the same every time. There is no variability from staining. There is no inter-rater variability. And there is no inner rater variability either, like the difference between me counting cells at 9 in the morning or at 6 in the evening. All of this was done on our Vader system. The imaging, the model training, the image processing, the counting, the statistics. And counting neurons is just one of the many things that can be done on Vader. Vader isn't primarily a system that comes with pre-installed methods. It's a system for developing methods. 
Take counting things, for example. Maybe you don't want to count all the neurons in a sample. Maybe you want to count only some of the cells in a cold culture. Or you want to count superstructures like colonies of cells or substructures like neurites or nuclei. You know what you need. Teach Vader to do it for you.